you've had the SFA charge based on what you said after the game. How do you feel about that? Any regrets on what you said? No, no, not at all. You know, my job is to defend the team, defend the club, and, and that's what we'll do in this case. We'll defend it vigorously, and and uh, when the date comes, then we'll um, we'll go from there. Will that involve you defending yourself mm. personally? I don't know. I'll sit down with the club and with the the lawyers, and then we'll, we'll look at it from there. Can you understand, Brendan, why you've been charged? Do you, do you think, if you compare it to other comments from other managers about referees this season, it's fair that your, your charges come to you? Listen, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into that. You know, I said after the game, and it's that one game. But it, for me, it's obviously my observations over many games, primarily around the inconsistency of of decisions. You know, so um, but I don't want to go into it too much. Like I said, I never, I never talk so much about referees and haven't done over the course of my career. You know, I understand they make mistakes, um, but I felt the ones last week were um, uh, were, were were clear, clear errors in the game. So, um, so like I said, the you know I've said before the the, the first one I've seen incidents worse than that. And, and I thought the, the on-field decision was correct. You know, the, the yellow card. Um, you know, we had a report back to say that the studs and boot was in the face of the player, which clearly a couple of days later, even when we get that report and it says that, it's clearly not the case when you watch it. So, um, but we'll go through that and we'll, uh, we'll answer that later on in the month. It's desperately sad, the, the whole situation. Uh, Fantastic young player, come in here as a 19-year-old uh, young man and uh, into another country and came and, and, and lit up the, the field with so many fantastic goals and had a really successful period. And whatever doubts he had in the summer, he was really happy to commit, signed a new deal. And um, and then now through probably no fault of his own or the clubs, it's... Um, he then has had to leave to take his career elsewhere. So, I spoke to to Liel on uh, on Monday Monday evening. We uh, had him around the house and just you know, as I knew he was probably going to be travelling the next morning. But um, but desperately sad because I, I really really was looking forward to working with him over a period of time, see if we could improve his game and develop his game. And um, but if you look back, he's he's created some wonderful memories here. You know, Celtic and. I'm sure Glasgow will have a, a big place in his heart and we wish him all the very best over now in, in America. Just in terms of that, you talk about his career that he's had, came here at 19, a young player, you know, moving country for the first time. Can he be a role model to, to other players, perhaps other wingers, or, or just anyone that comes to Celtic? And This is what can happen. You can play loads of games, score big goals in, in Europe, games against Rangers in cup finals. This is... You know, it can be a success story, like like a bad. Well, we're coming from anywhere. It doesn't matter where you you come from. Clearly, if you're coming from, you know, another country, if you're coming halfway across the world, where culture is different and uh, food is different, everything is different. Life intensity of football, then of course that's a, that that can be a challenge. But he dealt with that ever so well. But every player is different. You know, people expect these players to come in and just adapt straight away and perform, and some do. Some do, they have that adaption straight away. But for others it takes that little bit of time. And uh but for him he's you know, he, he done written so so well for the club. And um and now as I said, desperately sad he's left because we're we're losing a, a very, very good player. Um but we wish him all the very best in his future. A very tough situation for everyone involved, Brendan. Can you give us any insight into the conversations you've had over the course of the last few weeks? about trying to resolve it with Lael? Was there ever a, a pathway to maybe getting him back in the team? Can you, can you give us a bit of information on kind of how it's, how it's progressed? Not really. There was, it was just meetings and feeling and, and conversations that, I, that I'd had. I'd, it was just really, really difficult for him. He was training every day, committed to his work, he's top professional. Um, but just the situation, how it evolved and how it developed, he, it just... It felt very difficult, you know. And, and football's a game, very much of the mind. And if you're not quite focused, or you can't put something aside, or something as big as this here, 
then of course it becomes very, very difficult to be at your very, very best. And that sadly was the case for him. You know, we, we spoke most days, just checking in and make sure he was okay and seeing him in his training. But uh, but ultimately, he, he wants to play football. And when it got to the situation where I felt there was no, no chance or opportunity, I think we both looked at it and, and as a club as well felt that probably the, the best possibility will be him for for him to move on. Was he feeling the pressure from, from back home? Was that one of the things that was kind of weighing heavily on his on his shoulders that was maybe holding him back from, from being able to, to play? No, listen, it, it's clearly a situation that, like he said, it was it was unplanned and and wherever it comes from, he just there was multiple reasons for him not, not to be in that frame of mind. So, um, but yeah, listen, it, it's done now. It's done. He's moved on. Had a great two and a half years here at the club. Done very very well, and uh, we we have to move on. Yeah, football was known as a disappointment for you because obviously he'd made such a big impact. Still had his best years ahead of him. There was perhaps the potential still to, to tap into a regret that. There isn't a way other than this for him to, to move Yeah, well, absolutely, because he's he's really only at the beginning of what I would call the asset age. You know, from between 22 and 29 years of age, that's when you want to grow and develop, and then find yourself at the the top of your game. You know, he was 22, so he'd just begun really. So, uh, so yeah, and that's why I say it's desperately sad that we haven't been able to. Uh, See him here for longer because I feel that he will grow and he will develop. He has a natural instinct to score goals. He's really a striker that played wide. Uh, you look at his movement, you look at his intuition in the box to get goals. And, and of course, any team would always want that.